Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Waters. Day two, we still awake? Day two in Vegas, man. I was like, is this crowd going to be awake when I get out there? <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, so what a privilege to hear some great brands kick off already here. I have my friends at Bloomberg and uh, McKesson up here. And, you know, this show to me is such an incredible coming together of these ideas that we have around multi-cloud portability and ecosystem, microservices, um, and really what the developer experience to take business forward in the next 20 years is going to look like. Uh, so today, I just wanted to have a quick fireside chat with some, some good friends that we have across the industry. Because as we expand these ideas, we're really going to need a set of partners. Um, we're going to need to have really tight engineering relationships with the largest clouds in the world. And we're going to need partners like Accenture to help these enterprise brands transform the applications that they have into modern, um, agile microservices. So up first today, a uh, really talented gentleman uh, from Google Cloud, I'd like to welcome Jay to the stage. James gets back in black, I get random conference music, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Someday. song. The song pumps me up. It fits you well. <laughs> uh, so Jay, welcome. Maybe you want to give a quick intro to uh, yourself, what you do at Google? Yeah, absolutely. So good morning, everybody. Much to James' point, day two, a lot of people in the crowd. So congratulations, you made it this far. Uh, so principal strategic advisor at Google. Uh, I work with a lot of large enterprises and partners. Uh, folks looking to expand onto Google's cloud along with the rest of their cloud strategy. So uh, James and I have known each other for a number of years, and we started working together on Pivotal Cloud Foundry on top of Google Cloud Platform. So thanks for having me here today. Yeah, it's, it's, really, uh, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure to have you here, and I, I think it's a good sort of coming out party for some of the joint engineering that we've been doing together. Absolutely. I saw your booth was incredibly busy up there, so I, I think the message that we've been working on quietly together it's, it's great to start taking that a bit more public. Um, maybe you want to tell us a little bit about how you know, this incredible web company, Google, got into the cloud business and what your infrastructure is like and what, what that basic strategy is. Uh, Diane Green, you know, founder of VMware, who joined at the beginning of the year, um, you know, she says it best that people think we just got into this business in the last three years or so, but we've been building out our cloud infrastructure that powers things like Google for about the past 15 years. So really what we've been doing for the past three is really just externalizing those services and making them available for developers to use from compute network and storage, data offerings based off of our products like Search and Maps and YouTube, and externalizing that to folks. Yeah, and I just think quickly, and that folks want to understand just the time I spent with you and your team, you really are using Google's core infrastructure. Yep. So this is not uh, you know, kind of like Google's self-driving car, a different team that's off on the side. Like this is the core SREs that run the, some of the most important web services in the world now become kind of your operations team when you're using Google Cloud. Is that, is that correct? Absolutely. In fact, some of our, our big web scale customers, uh, folks like Snapchat, for example, they actually publicly reference the fact that they consider Google to be their SRE. Uh, because that's kind of the ownership that we take in that level of the infrastructure underneath the application code. Yeah, and an incredible amount of investment a year from Google and infrastructure. I think something like $9 billion last year. <laughs> yeah, last year alone was $9.9 .9 billion. So like one of the examples of where we differentiate on our platform, uh, our global network, right? So yeah, nice job, by the way. <laughs> yeah, our global network is thousands of miles of fiber. It's our fiber. Okay? If we were a telco company, we'd be the second largest telco. So when you jump onto our network, you're on our fiber throughout the duration of your request, no matter where in the world you are. Yeah. So those kinds of technologies and that kind of infrastructure is what we're now, once again, turning outward. Yeah, it, it really, really a very unique set of infrastructure in the world. Uh, so maybe you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing together in Cloud Foundry Engineering, some of the evangelism Google's embraced around Spring Boot, yeah. and how you see that incredible infrastructure that you have with, with our technology stack and, and how we're working together? No, absolutely. And I also, not to hijack our 10 minutes together, but this is actually kind of a, a personal thing for me to be up on stage here today. Back in 2004 uh, was my, my first introduction to Spring. My buddy Rakesh Jaywan, I worked at a large insurance company. We had like 400 EJBs wait for last. 
thing. Is that, a, is that good? <laughs> and my buddy Rakesh introduced me to a, a spring managed mean and dependency injection, and we subsequently shot all those EJBs down, and we're, I've been doing spring ever since. So to actually now be here on stage 12 years later, it actually is a, a special moment. So thank you for that. Yeah. But I think with Spring Boot, to your point, uh, Ray Sang, one of our developer advocates, yeah. he's done a lot of uh, Spring Boot uh, architecture examples on GCP. Uh, we had a session yesterday, myself and my buddy Vic Iglesias out there, uh, where we had demoed a Spring Boot app deployed across multi-region Cloud Foundry instances on GCP. Uh, so yeah, open source in general for us yeah. is something that we're really differentiating on. You know, yeah. The Cloud Foundry project started with just one Googler part-time at the end of last year doing some basic integrations. Yeah. But now we have a full engineering team committed with your engineering teams. And we're bringing all of that Google infrastructure uh, differentiation directly through the platform. And one quick example is our global load balancer. So when you build and deploy your applications on PCF on GCP, you're actually using the same load balancer that we use for Maps and YouTube and Search. So those are the kind of things we're evolving as we go uh, to try to pr you know, pr present PCF on GCP with our infrastructure. Yeah, I think that's really exciting to have like, this incredible you know, platform ecosystem being integrated into you know, this very unique infrastructure from Google um, you know, with your engineers contributing to it and kind of to Sam's point around open source community. Yep. Uh, the great thing about you know, Cloud Foundry being an open source was that there was no paperwork really to go back and forth between the teams or legal meetings or you know, OEM agreements. It was like, hey, we're going to start contributing to the Bosch CPI Absolutely. for Cloud Foundry. Um, and maybe another quick topic to talk about there, I think the unique way these two things come together is that Cloud Foundry has a two-layer scheduling system. So a lot of people talk about what your container scheduling is. We have our elastic runtime. We also have a VM scheduler um, automated system called Bosch, and that's where the CPI integration happens. And it, Google's infrastructure is incredibly fast. And so you start to get into a world where you can provision a VM in under 30 seconds. Yep. It sort of changes your capacity planning, uh, you know, scheduling and automation. Oh, I, absolutely. In fact, uh, I actually did a couple of demos a few weeks ago for some folks. And I had talked about the 30-second provision time. Yeah. Because a lot of folks think it's a talking point, and we just say things like that, like you might get 30 seconds. And so I was doing a demo, and you know, issue a G Cloud command, which is our command line tool. And as the scripts were going down, I could see people in the audience like almost counting. And it was like 32 seconds. And they're like, ah, oh, it wasn't 30 seconds. <laughs> but to your point, <laughs> it's almost unheard of. And so particularly in test dev, yeah. and when we hear of folks, you know, you're checking your code, goes through the whole pipeline. That 30 seconds to quickly get those results during that pipeline is really critical as you move through stages. You can shave literally an hour off depending on how many environments you have. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole world's moving to a more continuous delivery of code, and it's woken up to that. I think the DevOps world is woken up to continuous delivery of code, but I think very few people are yet on the continuous delivery of a platform. Exactly. Um, and I think that's one area where Cloud Foundry and Pivotal have been kind of very forward forward looking on that. And I think it's pretty unique how the two infrastructures can kind of come together there with an open source glue layer. Absolutely. So, so very excited about that. So maybe you want to talk about some of the data services that Google could then wrap around those applications that are two layer scheduled on, yep. on CF? Yeah, and this is probably the one area where I think our collaboration together uh, maybe excites me a little extra because yeah. you know, the, the actual infrastructure itself is important. But I think for Google and a lot of what we do, if you think about us, we're really a data company. Uh, you know, for 15 years, once again, whether it's our indexing to be able to provide search, whether it's our cloud storage and being able to provide objects quickly. But if, if who here has actually seen the announcement around TensorFlow and machine learning? Any data folks? Cool. Good number of you. So TensorFlow is kind of our open source machine learning, and it ties back to the OSS comments before. You know, if we're tackling areas that haven't been addressed yet, we are actually not only building what we hope will be, uh, hopefully it will be, uh, the best of breed implementation on GCP, but we're also open sourcing the frameworks out for the community. And so machine learning, we have six different pre-trained models already. Petabyte scale data warehouses in the cloud that can do terabyte sorts in you know, 15 seconds. I invite you all to come out to our booth that we have that James was referencing. Yeah. We have code labs to try all these data services out. Uh, but we're actually committed by the end of the year. We're going to have our first set of these data services that are plumbed natively through service brokers to Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So if, you, thank you. so if you're building and deploying apps on PCF, 
Not only are you using the same load balancer as Search and YouTube and Maps, not only are you leveraging the super fast infrastructure in our fiber, but now you can also consume our data services natively. So catch us at the booth, catch me, I'm kind of hard to miss. Um, <laughs> If you're interested in some of these things, love to talk to you about what it's going to look like. Yeah, and, and there, you do have a customer session today that folks should make sure they check out. We already have, you know, as much of this as vision and started off with open source hacking between the two teams, we now have some, some joint customers. Absolutely. So, yeah, 2 o'clock p.m. today, uh, my buddy Eric and Christopher, buddies Eric and Christopher, uh, we've been working together a lot over the past handful of months. So, yeah, 2 p.m., it's in the workshop. Uh, with uh, Home Depot.com, uh, Google Cloud Platform, and Pivotal Cloud Foundry, where the point of the session is literally to show you how ugly things can be. So it's kind of fun. They're going to be going through a lot of code, sharing things with everybody. So it's actually, it should be a fun session because it's not meant to be a, a very polished like me today. Like, I'm, 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 when was the last time a Googler was actually more formally dressed than somebody else on stage? <laughs> you guys are pretty uptight down in Mountain View. This is uh, true. We are, yes. San Francisco's got the style. <laughs> All right, Jay. Well, I just think this is such a really unique relationship we have between uh, you know, the Google engineering and the Pivotal engineering team, and uh, very excited about our, our customer roadmap together. So Absolutely. thanks for coming to Vegas and supporting us, and uh, we look forward to the, the roadmap together. That sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Come see me. Thanks.